Hi there. Today we're looking at XLNet Generalized Autoregressive Pre-Training for Language Understanding by Jilin Yang and other people from Carnegie Mellon University as well as Google Brain. So this is kind of uh, the elephant in the room currently as XLNet is the first model to beat BERT, uh, which was the previous state of the art on a lot of NLP tasks. Uh, to beat BERT at a lot of these same NLP tasks. So the chief state of the art result on 18 of uh, of 20 tasks, I believe. Maybe they test more. They outperform BERT on 20, the chief state of the art on 18, um, including things as question answering, natural language inference, sentiment analysis, and so on. So those are kind of remarkable results. And even more remarkable is that the architecture of the network is actually very fairly similar to BERT. Um, the kind of new introduction is a, a pre-training, um, a different pre-training procedure. And we'll look into that. So let's actually jump into their main points straight away. What they go into is there are two kinds of currently used pre-training methods for these NLP tasks. And both are can be understood as kind of language modeling. Um, one, they so language modeling, for those of you who don't know, is predict the next word in a sequence. So if I give you the sequence here, unsupervised representation learning has been, and then I ask you, what's next? And then you're supposed to say highly, right? That's language modeling in, in a nutshell. Um, so what they, what they differentiate are two kinds of language modeling. The first one they say is autoregressive language modeling. Now, what autoregressive language modeling does is exactly what we've looked at. I give you unsupervised learning has been, you're supposed to predict highly. And then in the next step, I give you unsupervised representation learning has been highly, and you're supposed to predict successful, and so on. So in the next step, I'm going to give you the entire sentence up until here, and you're supposed to predict in autoregressive because each token can look at the kind of previous ones in the in the sequence so when you well sorry you can't see that when you predict um, when you predict you you can always kind of autoregressively look at what the previous ones were uh, including what you've previously predicted um, of course during training this is uh, teacher forced as I said so you you put the actual words there but this is autoregressive modeling in contrast to what they call auto encoding and auto encoding is what BERT does and this is the following so in contrast to that let's say I have the same sequence unsupervised representation learning has been highly successful in the domain of yeah something and then I say okay I give you the sequence but I am going to delete this and this all right and now I ask you to predict these two all right so you can see the the task is slightly different as you now have access to all of the sequence basically except the ones that you're asked to predict but you're you kind of ask to predict yet yeah, them not in any order but you're asked to predict them at the same time basically so at the same time you're per you're asked to predict this word and this word and um so the first kind of these autoregressive language modeling has been used by transformer models until BERT and then basically BERT um, really pushed this autoencoding uh, language model pre-training which made it so successful and now this paper XLNet wants to in, like combine the best of both of them and in order to understand what's the best of of both of them um, so what's good at BERT we've already seen it can actually draw information from all of the context of the words it's trying to predict but what is the kind of pitfall of BERT and they they actually put this really nicely in an example they gave way further down where they s say comparison to bird I don't know why that is not like also in the introduction but here they have the sentence New York is a city right New York is a city 
this one and you're asked to predict these two words and if you now compare bird to what xlnet does um, if so the context is is a city and you're asked to predict new york what bird does is it simply masks out the two words and says here please fill in these two words now <coughs> this translates to the kind of objective being separated in the two words such that the prediction of York here is completely independent of the prediction of new. So if you know of any other city that is made of two words, for example, San Francisco or Los Angeles, then these would be as valid and any mixture would be as valid. So you might, Bert might end up with Los York is a city and that will be perfectly fine for Bert because while it's predicting Laws is a perfectly fine prediction for the first word of a two-word city, and York is a perfectly fine prediction for the last word of a two-word city, right? So um, these, these are the kind of mistakes that BERT can get into by not being autoregressive, by basically predicting all of these tokens at the same time independently of each other. Whereas XLNet, what it would do is it would specify an order. Let's say, okay, first I will predict the word new, for the first word, new something is a city. And then when I predict York, I will actually take into account that I previously have predicted the word new. So um, that's the main advantage at, that autoregressive uh, training has over autoencoding. Now, what are the pitfalls? The pitfalls are if you have this, this sentence, let's look at it, I'll write it down, New York, is a city right if you have this sentence and let's say actually you're not you're not asked to predict new and york you're, you're asked to predict the um the word a here a right you're asked to predict that um in order regressive style or a city that's a better example the two words a city in order regressive style if you predict the word a you can only ever look at what comes beforehand. Whereas if Bert were to predict a, just the word A, it, it would be able to look at all of it. Um, okay, let's not predict city. So you see the, the kind of autoregressive model is bound to the order of the, of the factorization of the sentence. Uh, so it's, it's bound to the order in which it has to predict the tokens. So here, if it's predicting A, it can only look at stuff that comes before it because it needs to do it in order, right? Once it gets to city, it can actually look at the entire sentence here. But um, before that, it only ever has partial information about the, about the context. Um, so actually, it wouldn't be much better if I had said we're trying to predict these two words is and a right and once i predict so so bert would actually have access to the word city here whereas the autoregressive models only have access to the ones before it uh, i hope that makes it clearer um, so the main idea in excelnet is where do where does this order dependence come from in the autoregressive model the order dependence actually comes from the factorization of the sentence of the of the language model so in a language model we're actually trying to assess the probability distribution of sentences here x is a sentence right and this can be naturally factorized into a product over the words where the probability of each word is only dependent on the words before it so this is a this is an equality it's not an approximation this is an equality the probability of a sequence can be decomposed into a product of probabilities like this exactly so this here is exactly what these autoregressive models implement each word is predicted from the words before it right um, there are other kinds of autoregressive models that also do the other direction where here they say okay the probability of a sentence is a product and each word is predicted from the words after it but it kind of is the same problem you only ever have access into 
the one direction. Basically, however you define the order of decoding, you only ever have access from a given word to what was before it in the order. So the main idea of XLNet is they say, hey, why don't we consider all possible orderings, right? I mean, that, that's kind of a, yeah, it's, a, it's an idea. So let's go back to our thing here. They say, why don't we consider all possible orderings? So basically what we will do is if this sample comes up, New York is a city, right? Um, what I can do is I can define an ordering. Let's say I always want to predict two words. So the word typically masks out about 15% of its input um, the to be predicted. And here, let's say we'll mask out 20%, which is two words. So of this sequence, we'll mask two words and ask the model to predict it. That's, that will be our, our pre-training objective. Um, the first time the sample comes up from the data set, I might specify the order just classically, right? Just one, two, three, four, five. All right, I'll predict the last two words. I'll kind of mask them out, right? I give the model New York is, uh, and then I let it predict A. And then in the next step, I'll give it New York is A, and I'll let it predict city. Cool. So now it, the pitfall is the word A here only has access to the things before it and not to city itself. Uh, city has access to everything. All right, so, but then I continue training and the next set time, this sample, right, it's in my data set, New York is a city. The next time it comes up, I simply go for a different order. Let's say one, two, three, four, five, right? So now, um, again, I'm, asked, I'm asking to predict the last two tokens, which here are uh, city and York. So in the first step, I would give it is, a, and new, and I will ask it what's here, and I'll ask it to predict city. And then in the second step, I'll also give it that, and I'll ask it, okay, now what's here, given all of that, right? So new mm, is a city, all right? You're asked to predict the missing word. So that that's pretty, um, so in the first step, it's new mm, is a hmm. And you're asked to predict that the second hmm. <laughs> and in the second step, it's new hmm is a city. And you're asked to predict the, the first hmm. Um, so now, as you can see, while predicting city here, all of a sudden, we didn't no longer, in this ordering, we don't have access to the word York. So we'll have to learn to predict city from the rest of the context. Now, even more, um, even more if we now decide Let's decide on a different ordering again. One, two, three, four, five. So now we'll actually, first step is to ask New York mm -hmm, City, please predict this thing here. All right, the model might, yeah, you might train the model to predict is, and then the second step, you say New York is mm, city. Please predict this. And now you see before, before when we are were asked to predict the word A, it only had access to things to the left of it in the very first uh, example. But now it actually has access to the entire context. So the the um, the idea is as we sample this data point multiple times, and each time we decide on a different ordering to decode. For each prediction of each token, token, sorry, we'll actually have seen many, many parts, many different variants of the context. And um, in expectation, we'll actually have seen all of the context, just like BERT, but we'll always having, have done it in an autoregressive way. So basically you get all the advantages of being autoregressive, namely that you are able to decode step by step while always um, referring to everything in front of you in the ordering. So the predictions are not independent. But you also get the benefit of BERT that it's able to basically look at all of the rest of the context in expectation in order to make this prediction.
so this is this is the main idea of um, of XLNet. They formalize this. I'll jump up again. They formalize it in saying, okay, what BERT does here is it actually see it it factorizes the log probability of a sentence into this sum. So the product in the log becomes a sum into the sum of log probabilities of um, no, sorry, this is autoregressive. Confused. Uh, <laughs> into the the um, words conditioned on everything in front of them. What BERT does is it actually approximately factorizes the log probability into each word and then everything in the context, everything that's not masked in the context. Um, and this is only an approximate factorization because now uh, you're basically dropping away all these masked tokens. And um, what they do now is they do the same as the AR, as the autoregressive models. Here, they decompose the log probability into a sum of log probabilities over each of the words, given all the words before it, but now not before it in the sequence, but before it in an chosen permutation z and z is sampled uniformly from the set of all possible permutations so in expectation they'll see all of the context so this is the this is the main thing they show this here in a kind of a, a picture with so here is the neural network this is the input layer and these are the hidden layers as the attention layers go up and up here you're asked to predict the, the the token. So here you're always asked to predict x3. So there is no, there's never going to be any um, weight here since if you knew x3, you would be able trivially to predict x3. One would hope. Um, all right. So in the in the first example, the factorization order chosen at random is three, two, four, one. Now you're asked to predict x3. And we know, okay, we should only ever we should only do this with things that are before it in the permutation order. Well, here since x three is the first in the permutation order, we actually don't um, we we don't have anything to go on. We basically ask to predict x three from scratch as if it were the start of the sentence. So we'll, we'll basically tell the model, I have a sentence that's that goes hmm 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 hmm. Please predict the third hmm. Right, it, it's a hard task. <laughs> yeah. Um. By the way, you're always able to look at this memory thing here. Uh, don't worry about this, for now. This is just uh. This is a, an augmentation they do on top of their idea. This is not the core idea. So okay, but now the second time this sample comes up from the training set, we decide on a different order. So the order here is two, four, three, one. Now again, we're asked to predict x three, and we're allowed to look at everything before it so 2 and 4 as you see here there are weights from x2 and x4 into this column that finally is then a um, ask to predict x3 so this is also this is now an, an easier task right you're allowed to look at the word to the left and to the right um, if you have the following permutation order one four two three you're actually allowed to look at all of the other words because x3 is at the end of the permutation order in order to produce x3 so all of these four and th the fourth thing is a similar so all of these four things will appear during training and you will learn from them so in expectations see, you'll, you'll basically have seen all variants of different uh, of different versions of the context, which which um, helps a lot, apparently. All right. So in the, in in order to achieve this, they had to make some architectural changes to the um, to the model. Namely, what you want to do is in a single pass through the model here, you not only want to predict one token, but you want to to do many predictions. This helps training a lot. So BERT uh, naturally always does like 15, it masks out 15% of the tokens or so. What was that, like 40, 50 tokens? So it masks them and it predicts them all at the same time. Now, you would like to do this here as well. You would like to predict all at the same time. 
um, the ones that you're asked to predict. But of course, the problem is for here, if you're asked, if in this factorization order, two, four, three, one, if you're asked to predict x3, you're allowed to look at x2 and x4. If you're asked to predict x1, you're allowed to look at x2, x4, and x3. So if you only have a signal pass through the model, the question is, do you now input x3 or do you not? Because the prediction of x3 is not allowed to look at x3, while the prediction of x1 is allowed to look at x3. So they do an architectural change in order to achieve both things so that you can do have a single pass through the, mo through the model, but the prediction of each token only depends on the things uh, in front of it in the permutation order. And they do this by having these kind of two stream, um, these masked two stream attention, where they basically have not, on, not one hidden representation, like in classic transformers, but they have at each step two hidden representations one they call H and one they call G. Um, so the H's are initialized with the embeddings of the uh, tokens and the G's are just initialized randomly and then they get transformed. And the point is the H of the next layer is always able to look at everything in front of it including its own its own H, basically it's one layer down, its own position one layer down. While the G is only allowed to look at the a it's allowed to look at the H's, but the H's from before, right? So, so all the G's here are only ever able to look at the H's from before the current position, whereas the H is always allowed here to look at the same, but also at the H at the current position. And now at the last layer, you simply ask the model to predict the token from just the G. And you can easily see that this results in this model only um, of, yeah, only attending to things before it. Um, okay, the, the G, by the way, can also look at the G uh, of the current layer. So that's that's also a thing, but it cannot look at the, at the H. So there's never any information flowing from the current um, from the current word embedding of the token you're trying to predict to the prediction layer. So basically that, that means the model can't just look like you, you're not telling the model the answer, yet you're still able to feed, to predict multiple things in a single pass through the model. Uh, formally, this is described here in the attention layer. Um, so they divide how they produce the queries and how they produce the keys and values. Usually the queries and the keys and values are produced from the same uh, hidden representation, but here they produce the keys and values from the H's uh, in both cases. But to update the G's, they produce the queries from the last layer's G, and to produce the H's, they produce the queries from the last layer H's. And most importantly, when they produce the keys and values, the H's they look at here to update the, the G, you're only allowed to look at H's before you in the permutation order, but to update the H, you're allowed to look at everything before, including the position you're currently at. So that's kind of the, that's a, it's an engineering solution to the problem introduced by their augmentation. Uh, I think it's a pretty, pretty neat solution, pretty cool. Um, yeah. So the rest of the paper here is incorporating ideas from Transformer XL. So Transformer XL is one of these classic transformers that, that is like this um, AR, so this autoregressive style of transformer but that has a few improvements over the classic uh, kind of vanilla transformer and they incorporate a number of things here namely first of all they incorporate this memory thing so the memory thing allows you to input longer sequences let's say our our um, transformer input length is maximum of five tokens what the transformer XL allows you to do is you input five tokens and then you 
save you do your transformer thing you encode it and you save something into this memory and then when you input the next five tokens your transformer is then allowed to look at the memory of the last sequence right and also update it so that that's that's kind of these these mem blocks you saw here so you're always allowed to look at these mem blocks from last sequence and then the hidden representations here of this sequence they will actually be stored in the mem block for the next sequence so this is kind of a trick um to so to to carry over information it's not the 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 updating the memory part isn't learned with the objective to make the next uh, prediction better but it's just um some information some kind of gradient free information to provide to the next step and it apparently helps so you can incorporate longer sequences into this transformer excel so they take this over and implement this into excel net they also do relative position encodings, uh, relative segment encodings. I, I won't go into this too much more here uh, because it's not the, the main idea, basically. So they do experiments and they um, compare to BERT architecture with the same, basically same architecture, so it's the same number of parameters and uh, or layers. And um, they beat BERT in all of these kind of NLP tasks or most of I think, I think they, they said in 20 and they reach new state of the art in 18 NLP tasks so uh, apparently their method works very well um, so what they do here is the uh, uh, last thing I find important is an ablation study of the effects of their improvements um, so they were because kind of my problem is I never know like they have this new idea okay we do these random permutations but then they also say oh and also we include uh, memory from XLNet and we we do relative position encodings and so on to me these kind of papers of course you reach better numbers you get a new state of the art so it's kind of a landmark paper but to me a paper should more be like a single thing so whatever your idea is this your idea is these orderings and whatever you need to do to make that work okay fine but then why why the additional transformer excel things um it's it's really then hard to estimate how much of the improvement comes from your idea and how much of the improvement simply comes from the fact that you already put these other things that actually have nothing to do with it so i appreciate these kind of analyses called ablation studies uh, where they kind of try to take away the memory and and these things and kind of look at what it's doing to the model and you s you see here um, kind of degrades down here as for example this column degrades as you take stuff away um, while still being more kind of more successful than BERT um, so that that I would say also yeah here it's more unclear but also kind of de seems to degrade a bit um while being more successful than bird so i appreciate this this um kind of really trying to show that your gains really come from your new idea and not from some other stuff all right so the last thing i want to mention actually is uh this thing so someone claiming or calculating that it costs two hundred and forty-five thousand dollars to train the XLNet model, um, the way they describe it in the paper. I'm sure this gonna be brought down because it was brought down that like the time to train was brought down with Bert as well. But this is just, I mean, this is crazy. This is just training it. Um, it it kind of gives large questions about the state of research and the ability um, for kind of let's say more academic players to participate in research on the one hand of course we like of course these companies should be able to do this and on the other hand if it seems like currently in some fields just putting more money on the table will get you a better result um not this this actually like it, this paper is actually a cool idea but it's still kind of prohibitively expensive to <laughs> even reproduce it 
Yeah, all right. So that was that was that for this paper. Um, I hope you enjoyed this and see ya. <laughs>